Hello again, I am Blunty and this video is partly me being a bit of a bitch, partly me giving you some helpful tips to make your photos not suck so much, uh, and partly headphone review, believe it or not. Now, about a week or so ago, uh, Sennheiser Australia posted a, a little tweet here. Let me angle it down so you can see it without the glare. How's that? How's that? How's that? How's that? Right about there. Right about there. Lost my train of thought already. Uh, Sennheiser Australia posted this to their social media feed. And I follow them because I love Sennheiser gear. I've enjoyed it for many, many years and they're always fantastic quality. Hashtag this video is not sponsored. Uh, but they did give me some product for free to review. So um, but yeah, I hated everything about this post. Let me read it to you. A song, a sunset. It's the simple things that move. Unpronounceable username. Not a Twitter user, an Instagram user. Nasha. So it's just a social media post sort of showing off their Momentum True Wireless Things and trying to sell their 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 branding of it because the Momentum series of headphones are not for sports and working out and, and, and they're not sort of gaming or anything like that. They're lifestyle. It's a lifestyle brand. But the thing that caught my eye about this post is the photo. It is terrible. And every, I mean, I don't know this, this woman. She might be a delightful woman. Uh, whoever takes her photos for her might be the, the best person on the face of the planet and, and saves puppies with cancer on a regular basis. But they can't take a photo to save their lives. Or at least I don't know why they would post this one if they can usually take a decent photo. I haven't even looked at her Instagram feed. It's probably full of... I, I bet you $1,000 she's one of those self-proclaimed Instagram models who travels a lot and just takes pictures in various locations and think that's, that makes her a photographer or something. I bet you. I bet you. Okay, I'm checking it now. <laughs> yep. Uh, I don't. Again, I don't want to be a bitch to a total stranger. Um, I'm sure she's quite happy and quite successful at what she does. But this is, oh, all the cliches here. Oh, she's even got the leading hand one. Every every single Instagram wannabe model does this shot. It's so cliche. No fresh ideas. No originality. No creativity. Uh, but the photo itself is. Terrible. And I'm going to lead you through why this is terrible in a second. I just want to read you my response to Sennheiser first. Uh, I said, I've had an eye on these, meaning the headphones. Maybe I can trade you a day of work for a pair. Because someone has to teach whoever took this about photography. Blown highlights, horrifically bad composition and framing, awkwardly off-level, bad crop, bad colouring, uh, slash snark. So I was basically just making a joke. It's like, hey, send me some headphones and I'll teach you how to take a photo properly. Uh, because whoever did this has no idea at all, like, like not even close. Well, it turns out that Sennheiser Australia called my bluff and actually did send me a set of the Momentum True Wireless headphones. And by the way, these are the most amazing headphones I have ever owned, bar none. And I, 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 anything, True Wireless, uh, uh, regular wireless with the actual little wire, uh, the, the wired headphones, in-ear, on-ear, over-ear, doesn't matter. These blew me the frick away. I, I, I don't know if I've ever had something stuck in my head that sounds quite this good. At least nothing that I can wander around out, out into the world with. I mean, you've got the big headsets and stuff. You don't know who wants to be seen wearing those. Douche move. But these are astoundingly good. And I'm not just saying that because they gave me a set for free. You know, if they were kind of average, I'd tell you so. You know me. I'm blunt. I mean, you saw how I responded to them on Twitter. <laughs> They're plenty punches. But these are astoundingly good. Um, and you know, even the material design, this case and everything, it's just premium experience. It's just end to end. Anyway, I want to talk more about the photo. Then we'll have another chat about these at the end of the video, because this isn't really a full review of these, really. Uh, what I said to Sennheiser when they said, hey, do you want a, you want a pair? I said, yeah, I'll, I'll make a photo guide uh, out of it. That'll, that'll be my angle on this. That'll be, that'll be my unique perspective on, on talking about these headphones. I'm going to show you guys how the photo should have been taken. Witness the arrogance of Blonty. I don't care. It's who I am. So let's start uh, by looking at exactly everything that I think is wrong with the photo they actually posted. Okay, just as an exercise and to explain what I'm talking about here, let's sort of point out all the things that bug me about this picture. First off, obviously, blown highlights. Hideous. Just makes it look like you used a super cheap and crappy camera. That's just, but there's no excuse for that. Another thing, this, this water reflection right here, there's no reason to have that just at the edge of the frame. Either include that in the picture or, or leave it out of the frame. Just having it bleed off the edge here just makes it look 
just awful. It calls more attention to it than it needs to. Um, the other thing about this is this 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 color cast in the sky because of whatever filter they use to make her skin tone look all nice. <laughs> that's that's not how a sky looks. And look, look, it's all because it's blown out here. It's just got these awful hard edges to all the gradients here. It just looks bad. That's framing and editing sort of issue there. But the most egregious thing about this picture is the, the level or lack thereof. Look at these buildings. They're all off kilter here. Buildings don't look like that. So when you frame up, a building that's off kilter like that, off level like that, you either go full ham and do it sort of at least 30 degrees or something, or you get them perfectly level. You're trying to make a nice calm picture. Look, look, she's all calm. She's looking at the sunset or the sunrise or whatever it is. And this, this off kilter building, all that does it is introduce a feeling of unease into the composition. It just doesn't look right. It's so distracting. Um, not to mention they, this, this line here, that's not level to begin with. And Mixing all this cool color down here with all this warm color up here. This is a really weird division in the middle of the composition. This is no reason to frame it up like that. It just doesn't look right. And now that I mention it, these aren't even level. Uh, they're not up and down, which means, you know, she's not even up or down. The level is completely off in every single axis. There's, there's no symmetry to any of this. It's just horrible. And look, look, the, 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 all this crappy... Paintwork and textures here. This is super distracting. Why would you pick this spot? Surely there's a spot on this fence that doesn't look this bad. Or, or just sit her on the top of this wall here and crop it out. And speaking of cropping, by the way, let's have a look at the rest of this composition. So we get a, we get a decent amount of head height here. That's not so bad. Uh, but then you amputate at the shins. That's 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 a really bad idea. When you're doing a, a portrait like this. So that maybe you come here or, or, or something like that. But this this is a really weird spot to, to crop out at. Either include the full body or go for a mid shot. This is nothing. So you've got, you know, a, a close up would be that. You've got the mid shot might be something like that. but or, or the full length shot where you see your feet in frame and get sort of an idea of where she's positioned them all. But this is, this is just a weird, weird way to frame that up. I do like the... Uh, the, the, the edge lighting on, on her face there and, and, and her hair and stuff like that. That's really nice. But the rest of the composition is just wasting it. I don't, I don't even like the pose. I mean, I'm not a portrait photographer and I'm certainly not a model. And you'll see that when I show you the uh, pictures that, <laughs> that I took in a minute. But this pose is weird. It's sort of off, isn't it? She doesn't look comfortable. She doesn't look, it doesn't look like she's striking a pose, but it doesn't look like she's comfortable either. The only thing that sort of being deliberate about it is brushing her hair back off the earpiece there because that is the point of this picture. That's the Sennheiser earphones right there. Um, yeah, the, the the weird the weird arm jutting out here. So we got the head, then we come here, and we get there and there and there and there, and that's just uneasy. There's no elegance to it. This is it doesn't look restful. It doesn't look tense. She's just kind of awkward. It's like a snapshot. It's like she wasn't expecting that picture to be taken. Or she's just concentrating on her face. But yeah, there's there's nothing about this picture that I like except for the edge lighting. Everything else about this looks terrible. Absolutely terrible. All right, so here's my attempt at a similar style shot. You know, lifestyle shot. We've got the water. We've got the city in the background. Um, the first thing you'll notice is, look at that. that. That pole right there. That's straight up and down. That's level. And, and our horizon back here. That's level two, um, and where I've chosen to put the horizon is sort of at my waistline, not sort of halfway through my neck. Or actually, let's go back. There was another thing I wanted to, another thing I wanted to talk about with the other one. Let's go back here. Yeah, this this too. I forgot to, I forgot to mention this too. Yeah, this this line right here, just cutting right through her neck. That's another compositional mistake there. Uh, you want that sort of line somewhere where it's not chopping off the head metaphorically. It just looks weird when you do that because. You got, you got all this water through here and then complete change of tone here. And it just goes straight through the neck. Just not, I mean, this, this is okay. Apart from the, the weird color shifts and the, and the bad textures and everything. But the position of that kind of uh, horizon line is just right through a neck. No, uh, that's not something I would do. Just saying. Okay, so back to mine. So yeah, yeah, we got verticality properly there. All the buildings in the background there, they're all straight up and down like they should be. 
Uh, there's a little boat coming into frame right there that I wish I hadn't. Uh, I wish I had a scene when I was taking that shot. That doesn't. That looks weird going out of frame. So we're not one happy about that. I would also probably edit out this little buoy or or marker or whatever that is in the water there. That's just kind of a weird distraction. But I did just edit these on my phone just to prove a point. So, um, but yeah, I've got sort of the the same sort of blown out sky uh, going on here. But in mine, instead of being all harsh and crappy and sort of blotting out uh, really, really ugly, it sort of fades much more gently into the blue over here. So while this is blown out, the sun back there, um, it's not blown out in a way that is distracting. It's sort of backlighting and thing, and you get the light bleed over my shoulder and everything there, and sort of uh, a little light catching there and a little bit on the back of the head there. Um, the pose, I think, is a lot more natural too. This is... Um, you know, I'm just actually what I'm doing is looking at my phone, taking this shot. I'm using the <laughs> using the remote control camera app on my phone right there. But it looks like I'm just sort of hanging out, picking my music for my picking my music for my Sennheiser earphones right there. And that's another thing I probably would have edited. I make I might sharpen that up, make a bit more poppy contrast, just so it sort of catches the eye a little bit better if I was doing this for a uh, social media push or and whatnot. Uh, the other thing I like about this shot here uh, is is these textures down here. This is a really Nice, nice sort of rough texture. And one of the things I don't particularly love about this is this this shadow right here. This shadow is a bit distracting. I probably would have edited that out if I was going to do a big editing job uh, and sort of really, really go for it. But the shadows I do like, uh, sort of, I'm all, I'm all sort of dark through here. This shadow here, this really dark shadow here. And this is the line. That nice smooth line across the pose and my f uh, foot down there pointing to the corner of the frame. Uh, I tend to do that a lot. I put things leading to the corner of the frame. And when lines are leading out of an image, I like them to leave at the corners. So that's what I did there. But that sort of, that, that line in the pose I was trying to get there. Um, I think my thumb looks a bit weird there as well with my shirt coming over it. Just notice that. that does, that's a bit distracting. But in general, I think this is a much better photograph in a very similar style. You know, it's designed to, hey, I'm, I'm out in the world. And you can see a lot of the world around me. And it's, you know, at sunrise here and like... Nice, nice long shadows and everything, and I'm sort of backlit, and I've you can see, you can see the headphones. Yeah, Sennheiser. Um, but yeah, I mean, if I if I was a prettier model and I had better fashion sense, <laughs> this is already a much better picture, in my humble opinion. This one is an alternate take, very very similar uh, editing and sort of uh, idea. I just haven't looked. I'm not looking at the phone in this one. Is the be major difference? You've still got sort of that major line leading out of the corner there. Everything is still straight up and down, nice and level. The horizon line sort of goes through my waist nice and naturally. Um, and all the, all the other stuff we talked about before, the only difference here is the pose is a bit different, a bit more casual pose. So I'm, I'm sort of looking off, uh, much like the other model was in the uh, original pose, looking off out of frame uh, into the world around me because I'm exploring it, I'm traveling. Um, but I, I, I do like the way my, my clothing falls in this one too. The wind had caught it sort of a, a little bit, so it's sort of all fluttery here. Uh, looks kind of natural. I like that one. I like that one a lot, actually. Okay, so once again, we have a nice straight horizon. We've sort of got a little bit of a feature over here in the uh, Harbour Bridge and the Sydney Opera House there to sort of give us a sense of location. That was what That's what was missing from the other one, too. There was no real sense of location. It was just sort of generic city behind her, generic shoreline, nothing really worth looking at. At least here, we've got something worth looking at. Uh, and once more, I've sort of positioned myself so you can... Actually, I just covered it up. I, you can, I've positioned myself so you can see the Sennheiser. It catches the light just a little bit there. Uh, there was another version of this photo where I had my head turned just a little bit where there was a bit of sun catching on my glasses there, but the uh, uh, I screwed up the focus on that one. It's, it's tough to take your own photograph. I had the camera sort of uh, several meters away from me and trying to control it via an app, and I just I forgot to set focus on the first one. Um, things I would change is I would probably take off the bag because that looks a bit weird sitting back there. Um, it looks okay when I'm standing up when you've got the strap sort of across my chest, but sitting down, that just looks a little bit odd, doesn't it? So I probably would have taken the bag off for that one. Um, again, the, the model positioning. So we've got some uh, fairly clean lines there, a very uh, what you call masculine pose, all about the angles. So we've got angles there, angles there, angles there, um, angles there. Uh, that's, you know, I don't know much about posing models and stuff, but I do know when you're posing a dude, uh, angular, strong uh, body positions work better. Unless you're photographing a very feminine dude, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. Um, I wish I'd edited this one a little bit more, actually. I would have sort of enhanced these textures down here and everything, but 
by and large, uh, the, it, it sells the, the concept again. You know, you can see we're out in the world. I'm enjoying my music and just sort of chilling out there. Um, and again, I'm sort of looking out into, you know, into the world off the frame. So you're wondering, oh, what else is out there when he's, when he's on his travel adventures and things like that. And finally, the last variant of it, once more, following the simple rules, Horizon Line. Actually, that needs to be straightened slightly in editing. I seem to have missed that one a little bit, but you get the point. The reason I don't like this one as much is I've, I've got a sort of weird pose that it makes me look a little bit chubby there. I've actually lost a bunch of weight. That's just that's weird the way my T-shirt is sitting. I'm, I'm skinnier than that now. <laughs> the other thing I don't like about this one is the weird angle my foot is at there. That's just a little bit distracting. I would have liked to relax my foot a bit. And, uh, you know, if I was directing a model and behind the camera so I can concentrate on one thing at a time instead of seven things at a time, uh, I probably would have caught that and just uh, uh, you sort of had the foot at a more natural angle down there. But, you know, that's that's just posing stuff. But by and large, composition, again, is nice. This time I've turned slightly to the camera, so uh, you're not getting the shine on the Sennheiser thing anymore. You could fix that in editing, bring, 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 more, bring a bit more attention to it by uh, lightening it up or something. Um but I like the, the head position on this one a little bit better instead of the full profile. So you sort of, again, looking at a frame. But, you know, I'm driving the, the point in the ground. The point is, so a better sense of location, uh, a better pose, and sort of uh, it, it still highlights the, the thing there. And I, I think that's uh, all over a, a much better picture. I think this one might be my favorite. It doesn't sell the location quite as strongly. That's actually the, the uh, uh, Harbour Bridge right there. Uh, I had limited... Uh, positioning for my camera because the camera is actually attached sideways to a pole, a lamp post right there. So I didn't quite have the flexibility of a tripod to get the exact framing that I wanted. But you know, as a, as a quick and dirty example of kind of how to do it right, uh, I feel like this is, is is giving you guys a few hints and tips and things to keep in mind when you're doing your own shooting. So things that most people don't notice if they're just a snapshot shooter. All they do is concentrate on how their face looks. Uh, they don't really concentrate on the line of the pose. They don't concentrate on where the horizon is. And is the horizon level? They don't make sure that buildings, which our brain is used to seeing is straight up and down. There are very few buildings that deliberately lean. But yeah, there's just sort of nice clean lines everywhere here. So you've got these shadows that go across here and these uh, uh, lines in the paving go across there and they both meet here. And if you do the, uh, and if you do the old uh, basic rule of threes kind of compositional thing here, you can see my shoulder and is intersecting there. The phone is just about intersecting there. My knee is intersecting there. Um, you've got the lines of uh, this uh, sh uh, shadow right here coming across and, and this one right here from the paving. And that sort of meets up at that corner as well. Um, it's, it's just all these little little compositional tricks you just try and keep in mind when you're sort of framing up a photo. Um, all of them are, are simple tricks. And then, they, you know, they're, they're just, you know, guides. They're not rules. You don't have to do them every time. But it helps to know as many of these little things as you can, because when you start piling them up on top of each other, you get a pretty decent looking pick. And I think this is a nice pick. I think it's dynamic. It's got a good energy. It's a nice wide angle lens. You can see the world around me. I like the pose. Um, you know, I like that when you when you sort of look at the the head is, you know, where most people would tend to focus on a person. We look at their faces. You can see, hey, there's something in his ear right there. You can instantly see that. Um, your eye is drawn to it because you're not normally seeing a little black blob in someone's ear right there. Um, and that's sort of, you know, helps highlight the fact that this would be a social media post for a, a, a product. So back on these, by the way, I have weird ears. Headphones don't tend to stay in my ears very well. Earphones don't tend to stay in my ears uh, very well. Um, my Apple, it, these are useless. I, I bought these uh, a few weeks ago. I can't even get it open. Um, my right ear is a bit different than my left ear, and the right ear just doesn't stay in. Absolutely, it's a complete waste of money. They don't even sound that good because they don't isolate properly. So everything sounds sort of thin and tinny and it's, it's just not very good. I mean, functionally, the way they sync, the way they cross devices seamlessly, you sync it once and it's available on all your devices. And, and it's, you know, functionally, really, really nice. Practically useless. These, however, they sync up much more traditionally because, you know, it's not the Apple Synergy kind of thing. Uh, but these stay in my ears properly for a start. Uh, even my right ear, which is the problem ear. So we can sort of... Uh, whoop. Pop that in there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, they stay in my ear properly. And they isolate a little bit, not fully, so you can still hear the outside world, which is handy if you're in the outside world, so you don't get hit by a truck or something because you don't hear it coming. Um, but they do a fair job of isolating, meaning they seal up reasonably well with a little silicon tip they've got on them. They come with a bunch of different sizes. But the sound quality of these is the thing. 
Comfort, fine. Lots, lots of headphones are comfortable, but these are the best sounding headphones I have used in living memory outside of big, huge 50 mil driver on ear things, uh, things like that. But when it comes to something to wear out in the world, this is the gold standard. Like the base is rich and thick without being muddy. The, the mids are clean. The highs are crispy without feeling piercing. And all this is in the default settings. Like there's an app you can start fiddling with that stuff, of course, but these are astoundingly good right out of the box. And, and Sennheiser do things that other companies don't do. I read somewhere that when they're designing their earphones, Apparently, the human ear canal, there is a few resonant frequencies of the human ear canal, so they specifically tune their earbuds to account for that resonance of just those two or three frequencies of the average ear canal. And, you know, all this ridiculously nerdy sound design stuff goes into making these, and, you know, that's part of the reason why they are not cheap. Uh, the other reason is because they're a lifestyle brand, and that normally comes with a premium. And material design, this, this box is beautifully made and everything, and it just, everything feels solid and good the, the pairing experience simple the controls you can sort of tap or double tap or triple tap or tap and hold uh and and all that kind of stuff easy to remember easy to use works flawlessly and every other bluetooth headphone i've used with my phone there's a few spots where i usually walk in sydney crosswalks and things either because of the induction coils in the road to sense when cars are there or there's some sort of wireless signal or what not something in the area always interferes with my headphones these no these never dropped not even for an instant, no matter where I was in the, in the trouble spots in Sydney, where every time I walked through, I usually would usually get that interference. These were perfect. So I, I, I can't recommend these enough. And thank you for Sennheiser for not taking it too personally when I mocked you on social media and calling my bluff and actually sending me a pair to check out because holy moly! I mean, if you got the money... There's no question in my mind that these are the best possible choice as far as in-ear headphone goes. The true wireless headphones. Whew. That review section went on a bit longer than I intended. I just wanted to say a few words about them and I, I got gushing. because I, I truly am incredibly impressed with them. Um, but yeah, I hope you got something out of the, the photography talk as well. Uh, again, like I said, when we're looking at the things, it's just a few simple things to keep in mind. Sort of the, the tricks, really. The, the rule of thirds kind of trick, the leading lines trick, the making stuff leave frame uh, in a corner kind of trick. These are all really simple compositional tricks that I use all the time. Um, and you can break, and once you learn these rules, you can, you know, which ways you can break the rules. Uh, again, not rules guides, we should say. The rule of thirds is a guide of thirds, really. It's just sort of a, a cheaty, easy technique, just somewhere to start, basically. But once you learn these compositional tricks, you can start fiddling with them in different ways and seeing how that works. But the point is, you have to think about how the frame is built. You're not just go, oh, pretty girl, stand her in front of a landscape, take a picture. No. How are you going to take the picture? Where is the framing? Where is the horizon line? Where is she being cut, uh, cut off? As we talked about the, the mid, uh, close-up mid, uh, full shot and everything like that. you got to think about all of this stuff before you press that shutter button. It's not enough to just go, pretty girl, nice light. Because the photo is going to look shit as I've demonstrated. The other thing this video has made me think about is I don't like selfies as a rule. I don't take that many selfies unless it's for a specific purpose or I want to give some context to where I am or something, like if I'm traveling uh, like that. But I don't, just, I don't take a selfie for the sake of a selfie, like some people do. Egotists, vanity monsters. Um, but the process of, of taking a selfie is kind of fun sometimes. I have to admit, I had fun today when I was out shooting those things, uh, setting up the camera, finding the framing and, and remote controlling it and stuff like that. You know, don't, don't always take your selfies with your arm out like that. There's, there's better ways to do it. Get yourself a little travel tripod or a gorilla pod or something. And, and, and if you're using a, an iPhone, uh, get an Apple watch so you can re remote control your phone. That's really, that's the main thing I do with my Apple watch, Re remote control my iPhone. I don't use the fitness stuff, obviously. Ah, uh, but yeah, most cameras these days have Wi-Fi control. Uh, at least on a very basic level, if not very, very fancy. Um, I'm sure Androids have, have remote controls as well. But yeah, get your uh, it's not, not good enough just to have a button. You want to be able to see your framing uh, when you take the show. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble again. Uh, we're draining away from the main point of this video. Photography is fun, but it's fun with rules, guides. I keep calling them rules. Not, we call them rules in the photography parlance, rules, but you can break them. They're not laws. Just rules. Thanks for watching. I'm Blotty.
We'll catch you next time.